Well, if I'm quick today, there might be enough sun to do some solar experiments. And today I'm going to play with this. It's a Wincon SX-013A solar charge controller. And I've had this solar charge controller in and out of my eBay cart for quite some time. Because I thought it was quite interesting, but also thought it was a bit niche. And in the box, well, there's very little, as always... The solar charge controller in this, uh, well, actually, rather nice, thick uh, lock bag, and uh, the manual. And the first impression is it's absolutely tiny, only about as big as this 9-volt uh, OK cell. So the label on the front shows that the battery and the solar attach in the top, and uh, there's an seven segment display in there and one button and then this is the bit which I think makes it quite a niche product the load output has RGBY connections now I'm going to need something to prise this open there are no screws and that unclips relatively easily and there we have the uh, PCB which to be fair has very little on it really there we have the seven segment display and the button there's some type of microcontroller in here which uh, i think has had all its markings rubbed off sadly uh, i can see four transistors down here at the bottom which are obviously switching the uh, rgby connections a couple of transistors up the top is that a voltage regulator there for the microcontroller and uh, what seems to be a thermistor here if we take a look at the manual you can see that this seven segment display has three bars the top one being that the uh, solar is active the middle one being that the battery is in a good condition and uh, the bottom one that the load is on they also flash if there's an issue um, but we can also see here why we get a good quality plastic bag with this solar charge controller because with a couple of uh, zip ties and uh, some tape, well, that's how you keep it waterproof. And this is a full colour manual and that's kind of required because all these pictures show the various different RGB functions and RGBY functions that you can use with this uh, solar charge controller and they give an idea of all these different sort of shop um, displays here as well as just standard RGB LEDs but what perhaps isn't shown entirely in the eBay auctions is this charge controller will also do standard LEDs and uh, it gives the example of garden lighting but the thing that surprised me the most about this small solar charge controller is the different chemistries and voltages it will charge. We've got standard sealed batteries here, valve regulated lead acid, we've got gel batteries, and then we've got life epo 4, lithium iron, nickel metal hard dried. It does quite a few different things. And you can see it does three lithiums in series or a single lithium ion battery. It also does uh, four life epo 4 batteries in series or a single one and six nickel metal hard drive or three and to change all these settings you need to uh, get into this menu system and uh, well let's give that a go so i'm going to plug in a power source first and i'm going to use this small module of super capacitors uh, the reason for that is i can charge it and discharge it much faster than a standard lead acid battery so uh, this will do the job quite nicely for today so let's plug it in because i've already charged it to about 12 volts it's uh, dropping a little bit 11.78 showing on the port power and we can just see there the center segment lit up on the display showing that the battery is normal let me put a piece of tape over that to see if i can improve that yes i think that improves things a little because now we can see that the center uh, led there is on showing the battery is normal and the load is on showing that well is on so with the sun shining outside let's get a solar panel 
connected straight in there and we can see now that the uh, top LED is on saying there is solar coming in and the middle LED is flashing and we can see oh an amp going into my uh, sealed lead acid imitation battery and this is straight out of the box so I'd expect it's in lead acid mode so we're up to 14.3 14.4 volts there and the current has switched off quite quickly so 14.2 volts and uh, it's regulating presumably at that level yeah so if you remember the manual here on the sealed battery it's gone up to the max charge voltage of 14.4 and presumably it's going to now drop it down to 13.6 before it delivers any more current into what it thinks is a battery but we know are supercapacitors and we can see it's regulating about 13.9 volts here the uh, current keeps on shooting up like that does make me think this isn't a PWM solar charge controller though uh, the way that that current is so erratic absolutely nothing for a while and then suddenly 150 milliamps so uh, I'm not entirely sure this is a PWM solar charge controller and of course that also suggests it's probably in this gel battery mode with a float voltage of 13.8 volts rather than 13.6 so let's see if we can work out this uh, menu system, shall we? It's in the normal status menu there with two lines showing. Obviously, the load is off for some reason. Uh, but if we press and hold the button for three seconds, we get to a number, and it's currently number six. And that means that the load is on at all times, 24 hours. Well, doesn't seem to be at the moment, but that's adjustable to load off at all times. Um, eight and nine don't seem to be mentioned in the manual here uh, but zero and upwards depends on the amount of hours that the load is on so i'll put it back to six which is meant to be on all the time uh, we seem to have gone straight back to the status menu if i press and hold the button for six seconds we end up in this second mode, which is showing me B2, and that's the battery mode. So it is saying that my battery is in gel mode. Um, and then we can press and hold for three seconds and go into the U menu. Now the U menu is showing us uh, the light adjustment, when that load turns on, how much uh, light level should we have on the solar panel. So I'm not particularly interested in that one at the moment, but if we go to, oh, we've come out. You see, this menu system is difficult, it has to be said. So we're in B mode, press and hold three seconds. U mode, three seconds. P mode. Now, P mode is the amount of power uh, on the output well i'm not so worried about that we've gone back to the main menu again brilliant isn't it l mode now this is where we actually start using the rgb output and we can change the effects that are created on the uh, output there and f mode seems to be pretty much the same from what i can decipher here um, different cycles of led outputs now the main reason why I thought it would be interesting to have a look at this little solar charge controller was the fact that it did charge uh, lithium ion batteries and I'm going to give this one a go 3 times 3 lithium ion batteries, 3 times 3.7 volts which uh, is a maximum charge up to 12.6 volts, well that's about right, 4.2 volts per cell uh, but then it float charges at 12 volts or 4 volts per cell and all the previous cheap lithium charge controllers that i've tried tend to float charge at the maximum charge voltage here of 12.6 volts rather than anything lower so i thought this one was definitely worth a try but first of all we need to get it into the lithium ion mode so if we press and hold that button for about six seconds we get into the b mode there we go and we're on b1 at the moment uh, so B2, 
B3, B4, and then we press and hold again. We go into the U mode, press and hold again. Now with the mode finally selected, uh, but unfortunately I think the sun's behind a bit of a cloud, let's plug in the solar panel and see what happens. So I'm hoping this will charge up to 12.6 volts and stop there. Three times lithium cells going to 4.2 volts. Uh, so there we are, we're at 12.4 uh, volts, 12.5. 12.6 and we just went to 12.65 I'd suggest and the uh, current cut entirely so uh, that's reasonably good I'd suggest. I couldn't finish off a video about this little solar charge controller without looking at the load so I've made this little uh, perf board up here with a red green blue and yellow LED on it and uh, a 1k resistor on each of those. So to test this we need to go into the menu system. The LEDs, there we are, that's the power, the brightness, I'm not too worried about that one at the moment. In L mode we're in L1 which means no flashing lamps or electrical um, equipment. So that just seems to be on. L2 and we start to see some animations, but interestingly, the yellow lamp remains on all the time. That's because we're in RGB mode and not RGBY mode. If we uh, change to L3, we're in RGBY mode. We can see that because the yellow LED is also flashing. And we can also change the effects here. L4, L5 apparently is re reserved for future use, so it doesn't actually do anything. So if we change it back to L3, I think, RGBY, press and hold on that menu and go into the F mode, we can then see the various different effects. And, uh, well, fading between... That seems fairly random light, quick, oh we've gone back to the main status menu somehow. So I thought it best to connect the solar charge controller to a real lead acid battery to check if it really is doing PWM because I suspected it wasn't and to me it doesn't look like it is. We're seeing everything from zero current all the way up to two amps being delivered into this battery. It's trying to regulate at 13.6 volts, but as you can see, it's actually going up to 13.8 and back down again to 13.2 a real pulse width modulated solar charge controller would be able to regulate that voltage at 13.6 much more accurately. So in conclusion, what do I think about the Wing Kong SX-01-3A? Well, if you're just looking for a solar charge controller that charges different chemistries or one specific chemistry that you're after, then this might fit the bill. If you really need an RGB or RGBY output, on your solar charge controller, well, this is the one for you. But sadly, it isn't PWM from these tests that I've done. It's simply a switching solar charge controller, but it does regulate at roughly the right voltages. This is available on eBay for a little over five pounds or about seven and a half dollars. So it's definitely cheap enough to give it a go if you want to try one for yourself. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video, if you have give me a thumbs up, subscribe down below, comment if you can, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.